collaborate in a couple of ways. Um, you know, the first is um, sometimes there are researchers who are, um, you know, doing work where they might need access to something in our department, but they would benefit from work that the project has done. So we're always trying to um, connect researchers who reach out to us um, to the project as well. Um, you know, there's uh, the project doesn't um, doesn't deal with all of the sewer papers, but the work that you do um, with the family letters is just so wonderful. We really want to make sure that people who reach um, who reach out to us um, with questions um, about the the sewer papers know know about the project. Um, you know, there's some logistical work too in terms of um, handing collection material um, back and forth, um, and so. Um, you know, pulling things on our end, making sure um, that everything is in good condition. One of my colleagues um, who um, does preservation for our department, she takes a look at everything that we um, send over to the sewer project. And if there is um, conservation work that needs to be done, if the letter needs to be cleaned or repaired in some way, um, she'll do that before it goes over to the project. And so it's kind of a combination of um, sort of logistical communications um, and the back and forth of material, but then also kind of that overlap um, in terms of researchers and helping people um, get access to material. I facilitate access to the collections. So a member of the project sends a spreadsheet of sewer family letters and diaries needed for digitization and transcription, and I get to immerse myself in 19th century family correspondence locating the letters and diaries, recording which ones are going over and putting them in acid-free archival boxes for their careful field trip over to the project. Once the project is done with the materials, I check them in, put them back in their temperature and humidity controlled forever homes. And we're talking about a great deal of collection material moving around. So it takes a great deal of meticulous record keeping and attention to detail to know what is where. I'm really glad we can provide this level of access. So in addition to the family letters, the collection contains index correspondence, mostly of political topics in the 1840s to 1870s, and huge ledgers of beautifully scripted state correspondence, speech notes from when he was Secretary of State, pardons from when he was Governor of New York, and artifacts such as a turkey feather fan preserved in a shadow box frame, and a gold and enamel stuff box from around 1866 given to Seward by an unnamed lady. There's just so many different ways that you can kind of go into the collection. You could be interested in something really, really obscure, um, some obscure event um, in 19th century American history, but you know, maybe William Henry Seward was on a committee that discussed it, or um, you know, it was a company that he was investing in, or um, one of his sons was involved in some way. And so they just had their fingers in so many different areas of um, of the United States. And so, um, you know, whether it's Alaska or it's his daughter's diaries, there's just, um, it's huge, huge, huge um, intellectually, physically um, to think about. 